My lower thirds never show up, and I'm wondering uh, Scott, why. Scott, yeah, I'm, doing, uh, I'm getting this weird uh, right prompt from the computer, some kind of weird permissions issue. The thing How do you save a time slot? I just don't see anything on the interface anymore. Anyway. Is there a way you can delete a time slot? Every time I go in, hi Scott, I wanted to ask you. Listen, I've got a Macintosh computer, and I just can't seem to get the plug-in to function. Look, dude, I can't get my custom images to show up. This That's it. We are going to get to the bottom of the ultimate solution four lower thirds at OBS Studio. We're gonna take care of the Macintosh incompatibility issue. We're gonna fix those who are using Windows 11. It's gonna work for you as well. There will be an automatic reveal based on time, just like the lower thirds dockable control panel tool at OBS. We are going to remove the time slots, no permission issues, animations are gonna work. You can put in a subscribe button if you like as well. You can use as many as you like on a screen and placement is also unlimited. You are going to love this plugin. It's by the king of plugins, Exeldro at OBS Studio. I can't wait to show you. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live streaming. We are in a current gold rush, but we're not digging from gold these days. What we're trying to develop now is attention from the general public, and it's not easy. But one of the tools that is really great at developing attention from the general public is live streaming. And this channel is centered around live stream technology education, like OBS, OBS plugins, OBS tools and scripts, and other software packages that help your live stream really look cool. So if you like what you hear, subscribe and click the bell to learn all this new tech. Now, the plugin that we're gonna learn right now is the Move Transition plugin. It can do all kinds of wicked cool stuff, but we're gonna focus on one specific task, and that is to bring a source into view and out of view automatically based on a time increment. And it's compatible, and there's gonna be no problems, and you're just gonna absolutely love it. I'm gonna go through step by step by step so that you understand the process and you can apply it to other sources in your live stream at OBS Studio. Let's get started with step number one. Okay, installation process. Odds are you're already a super ninja with OBS Studio, and you're like, oh, come on, Victor, do we have to talk about install? Well, we have to help the new guys so we can grow this community. So real quick, let's talk about how to install this thing. Go to Google. Type in Move Transition Plugin. Search. The first thing that pops up on the left is the link you need, the Move Transition OBS Forms link. Click that. It takes you to the blue page where Move Transition resides at obsproject.com. Click the white download button on the right-hand side. Now, if you have a Mac, the link that you want to select is at the bottom. Linux is the next one up from the bottom. But if you have a Windows computer, I highly recommend that you select the .exe file, which is the windows-installer.zip. Click the download button, download that zip to your computer, expand it. There'll be an exe file in there. Before you double click the exe, shut down the OBS uh, program, execute the exe file, let it do its magic, <laughs> installs all the files, bring up OBS Studio, and you are good. We will confirm the success or failure of your installation in step number two. And there goes my mic. <laughs> I gotta glue this together. <laughs> Yes, on Thursday the 18th at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I will be having a live stream for the first time in two years. We'll be talking about code pens, plugins, and extra software packages that will make your live stream wicked fun and cool. Plus we'll do stories and game shows and the whole thing. I cannot wait to see you there. Okay, so we're going to create a scene and we're gonna add an image to that scene, okay? But what we're gonna do is add two filters to the image that control its movement up and down automatically. But here's the thing, you add the filters to the scene and not the image source. I know it's wacky, that's just the way it is. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, create a new scene by clicking the plus sign in the lower left-hand corner and name it Move Transitions. Then click the plus sign under Sources and add an image source, this one right here and add any kind of image that you wish, just for testing purposes, okay? In this case, I added a lower third. Now, the next thing that I tell you must, must stick, stick into, into your, your brain, brain like, like super glue. glue. We need to add a filter that actually moves the image source, and you would think that you'd add the filter to the source itself. No, you, you need, need to, to add, add the filter, filter to, to the scene. scene. So, right click, go to filters, click the plus sign, and select Move Source. If you don't see Move Source as a filter here, 
That means that the Move Transition plugin did not install properly. Click it, type Move 1. Hit OK. Click the plus sign a second time and do the same thing, but this time, name it Move 2 and hit OK. OK, let's move to the next step. For step three, we're going to designate the motion of the lower third, and you can't designate motion without first defining the point where it's traveling from and then the point where it's going to. This is the Get Transform button. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Click the Move 1 filter, scroll down, make sure that the lower third is in view, and click the Get Transform button. Now, if you click it and it scrolls you back up to the top, that means that the coordinates were not set. Let's see if it happens in this example. It doesn't. If it scrolls back up to the top like that after clicking the button, you have to scroll back down again and, and hit, hit it a, a second, second time. time. You want to make sure that the transform positions number changes here. Okay, that's crucial. Now let's go to move two, and we're going to take the right edge of the uh, filter window here and drag it over so that we can see the actual image source underneath. Okay, so we're going to click out of the filter window and click the actual image source, and I just moved it just a tad there. Hopefully I didn't screw it up. And we want to hit the down arrow, so it's going straight down. Don't drag it with your mouse. Click the down arrow, that way the movement is definitely going to be up and down versus showing the graphic on an angle, which would look kind of funky, right? So use that down arrow to make sure that the graphic moves straight down out of view. Now, once again, scroll down and click Get Transform on that Move 2 to designate the out of view position, all right? Let's go back up to move one. Scroll all the way down, we'll make this wider again. We'll scroll all the way down into the actions window. Make sure that filter only enabled when moving, okay? Start trigger should be activate when the filter becomes actively shown in the final mix. In the next move, select move two. We're in one, we're moving to two, right? And then we go to move two, scroll all the way down, make sure that filter only, only enabled is when moving is checked off. Start trigger is active when this filter becomes actively shown. Next move should be move one. And let's hit the start button and see what happens. Pretty cool, right? So here we are actively automatically moving the lower third into view. And now basically, for step four is defining the delays. Step four, we're gonna cover timing, how long the transition takes to come into view, how long it stays in view, and how long it stays out of view. So while being in the filtered window from the sources window, right, click move one, and let's make sure that the lower third stays into view. And we do that by modifying the end delay. So right now it's only 300 milliseconds. Let's make it, 2,000 milliseconds, and hopefully it will stay into view. There, it stopped. So now, it looks like it's in view for about three seconds, give or take. What about the time by which the movement occurs? Sort of slow it down so it's more slick and more professional. Well, if we modify the custom duration in move one, watch what happens. We'll make this 1,000. It comes into view slower, but what about the motion where it leaves view? Well, we have to go into move two and modify the custom duration for it. So we'll make that 1000. So now it moves nice and slow leaving and nice and slow coming back. What about keeping it out of view for a specific amount of time? Well, going to move two again and the end delays, which you want to modify there. So I'm going to make it 3000 and now it will stay out of view for a period of time. All right, cool. Step five is the best one because it is a huge time saver, and that is you don't wanna to have to recreate the move transition filters for every scene that you make. You can embed one scene into another. So we have the move transition scene created. I'm in another one called blank, and I'm gonna click the plus sign under sources here and select scene. And then I'll designate the move transition scene that I created. So where is that sucker? Here it is right here. So I'll hit okay. And there it's been placed as a layer over the existing sources that are in the blank source. That's a huge time saver and you have to understand how to do this because it just makes your day so much easier. If you're interested in some other plugins that 
are centered around the move transition. I have a series of playlists right here that you'll find absolute value in. This involves motion when you transfer from one scene to the next and how to move objects to the beat of your music. It's called music visualization. All of these tasks and more are available with a move transition plugin. I will see you over there. Best wishes, stay strong and keep fighting.